Good afternoon, members, uh, officers, and members of the public who may be watching um, the Planning Committee on the um, Authorities YouTube, YouTube channel. Uh, the Planning Committee of the 15th of July. Um, as usual, I think we're getting used to this now. Um, I will go through a list. Uh, it's not in alphabetical order. I've had this from when we first started this. I do know there are some apologies, um, which we'll come to when on the agenda item. But if I call your name out, um, please say yay. If I don't hear anything, I know obviously someone's not here. <laughs> So, Councillor Alban. Here. Councillor Duckworth. Here. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Zeki. Here. Councillor Dennis. Councillor Bayford. Here, Chair. Councillor Coleman Cook. Here, Chair. Councillor Hart. Here, Chair. Councillor Wright. Here, Chair. Councillor Garner. I'm here. Yep. Thank you. Councillor Scott. Here, Chair. And I got your message, uh, Councillor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Moore, I know is. Um, myself, obviously. Um, I will come to any other, any people, other people, because I know we have some substitutes today in a moment. Officers, Estelle, our legal officer. I believe she has joined us. Yes. Hello, Chair. Sorry. I was no, on. No, don't worry. Thank you, Estelle. Emily, uh, Committee Clerk. Hi, I'm present. Ian Livingston, Planning Applications Manager. Hello, Chair. Present. Thank you. And I believe it's Emma today um, presenting, or is it yourself, Ian? Yes, I'm present. Right. Thank you, Emma. Right, as, as always, uh, just a few uh, housekeeping notes. You don't have to wear any masks while we're on um, here, just to let you know. Uh, if you have any technical uh, difficulties during this meeting, please contact Democratic Services Officer on call, who will attempt to assist you. Today's officer is Charlotte, and her number is 577193. Her number will be included in the top of the chat stream uh, Box for your convenience. I would ask all participants when you are not speaking, please mute your microphone. This minimizes background noise and will help everyone in who's listened to the proceedings. Microphones must be only used when the participant has been granted permission to speak. To gain permission to speak, please very briefly indicate on the chat box on the side, the right hand side of your screen and I will then make a note that you wish to speak. Would everybody uh, present please ensure that the mobile phones are turned to silent and that they are not used to make or receive phone calls whilst the meeting is in progress. Please also refrain from checking emails or conducting any other business and ensure that you are in a quiet room free from any distractions at, for the duration of this meeting. Uh, would you please note that the meeting is being streamed live to members of the public and following the meeting, the recording will be available on the Council's YouTube channel. Members requesting to speak under Council Procedure 21, 70.1, I believe there might be, if I'm wrong, I apologise to you. Are there any other members... Okay, uh, public speaking. The following applications have been reserved for public speaking. Would members please note that the following item on the agenda, which is 4B R02, that's public speaking. Agenda item one, apologies for absence. I have received uh, apologies from Councillor Alban, but that's not correct. Uh, Councillor Keane, Councillor Curry, uh, to whom Councillor Harry Scobie is present, and from Councillor Taylor, for whom Councillor Rozeski is present. 
Now, I believe we have some substitutes I've seen come up on my screen. Can anybody? We do have um, additional apologies. Um, Councillor Dennis has um, since given his apologies as well. Right. I, I'm not aware of anybody else um, here as a substitute, only okay. Councillor Scooby and Councillor Wyshewski. Thank you, Emily, for that. It's purely, we were having a chat before the meeting went live. Thank you. Agenda item two, declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest? No. Nope. Minutes of the Planning Committee held on the 17th of June. Do members agree that the minutes of the Planning Committee held on the 17th of June 2020 be approved and signed by myself? Uh, could I have a proposer, please? Proposed. A name, please, for proposing. Yeah, Councillor Rosheski. Thank you, Councillor Rosheski. A seconder, please. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll join. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do, do you all agree? Agreed. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, agreed. Thank you for that. Uh, Agenda item four, schedule of planning applications and public speaking. Uh, once again, regarding site visits, uh, they will only take place when it is safe to do so. And listening to the news, as I think we do here, I'm not sure when that will be. Um, so agenda item 4B, which is a planning application for refusal at 91 Botany Road, Broadstairs. I would ask Estelle to read out a statement um, from uh, Mr. Elbridge. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. We know that personal circumstances are not generally taken into account when planning applications are considered, but we have written to the planning committee to explain the reasons why this is a retrospective application, and it is through no fault of our own that we ended up with a dormer larger than previously approved and additions finished in a material different to the main roof, especially when the work was overseen by one of the council's building inspectors. We have also previously circulated to members details of other dormer extensions in Botany Road, which we feel are not so different to ours, with cladding having been approved elsewhere and which we feel sets a clear precedent for the use of cladding in our case. We are extremely concerned that the stated ground for refusal says that there is an issue with the two dormers on the left side of the bungalow, but the enforcement notice did not require their removal, and we feel that this is inconsistent and unreasonable, with the possibility that if the application is refused, we could be served with another notice demanding their demolition. As far as the approved cladding used on the dormer up the road at number 51, Although it might tie in with the colour scheme on the ground floor, this could change as a result of redecoration, going completely against the council's thinking. In exactly the same way, we could paint our ground floor in a colour that matches the cladding on the dormers. Similarly, we could paint our dormers in a colour which more close, closely matches the tone of the roof tiles and is something we are more than prepared to do should councillors feel that the present colour of the cladding is unacceptable. In fact, when the matter was first raised and things were better financially, we did offer to replace the cladding with tile hanging, but this was declined. And we are not now in a position to afford to make the same offer, but we could repaint the dormers in a different colour, which could be made the subject of a condition whereby we could then agree with officers a preferred choice of colour. We clearly hope that the committee agree with us that the dormers are not so harmful to the area and approve their retention. But we also hope that the offer to repaint helps to reassure members that we are more than prepared to work with officers to find a mutually acceptable resolution. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Estelle. Uh, speaking on behalf of Mr. John Elvidge, I would ask the uh, planning officer to give an outline of the report. Uh, Emma, please. I'm just um, 
sharing the um, presentation with you now. So um, this is the application site outlined in red. And so it's halfway down uh, Botany Road. The, um, this shows the aerial view of the site. So the application site is in the center of the screen here. So it's a retrospective application. So these photos that you're now going to see are, are showing the um, proposal. Um, it's for roof alterations, which include three dormer windows. Um, the central one you can see to the front of the site here and two side dormer windows along with uh, an extension of the roof to the rear. So this is standing to the front of the property looking, looking at the, uh, the, the proposal. This is then taken from the right hand side of the property. So you can see um, the, the dormer on the right hand side um, and the, the design and the materials that have been used on this. And then this is showing it further away. So you can now start to see the neighbouring properties. That are, it's a, in a road full of modest sized bungalows, although uh, a number of properties in the road have, have had alterations at roof level. So again, you can see the uh, dormer windows in the, in the distance here. Um, you can see on the right that there are some other properties that have been extended. So then this is from the left hand side looking towards the property again you can see the front dormer and um, the projection on the right hand side and now you can see the left hand side as well which consists of um, two separate dormers flat roof and again with the uh, uh, blue gray cladding and then this is looking towards the application site in the distance here so you can see the property in the distance so you can see it's quite a prominent property within the street that does have long views of of the development and, and then this is just showing examples of other properties in the street. So this is standing outside the application site, looking um, opposite on the other side of the road at um, the existing properties. And then this is just looking again from outside the application site, site to um, the south away from uh, the beach area. And again, showing um, the properties in the street. So again, you can see some other examples of roof extensions. But in the majority of cases that you can see, um, toll hanging has been used for the dormer windows. So this was the existing um, front elevation. And then this is what has previously been approved. So there's been um, two previous applications. One has been approved and one has been refused. So there's an initial application for um, smaller dormer windows, which has been approved. And the dormer windows were also approved with tile hanging. So this was what was expected to have been constructed on site. The, um, an application then came in following this for the larger development, which you, you saw in the photos, and we have previously refused this development. So this application is a resubmission of that same proposal with very, very minor um, amendments. So this is then the, the previous approved one. Uh, we have no concerns with the size of the front dormer or with the size of the dormers on the left hand side. So the biggest impact, is, as you'll see through the plans, is the right hand side dormer, which has, um, has enlarged in size. So this is the approval. And then this is now what's been built. So again, you can see the front dormer remains the same. The left hand side dormer remains the same, but the right hand side dormer has significantly increased in both depth and width. And then this is now looking on the left hand side of the um, building as existing then this is what has been approved with the reduced um, the size of the dormers. And this is what's been built. So the distance to eaves level and the distance to the ridge level from both dormers remains the same as previously approved. So the, the dormers are not significantly different to, to that previously um, considered to be acceptable. Um, again, the, the, the main difference though is the use of materials. So previously these were both tile hung and as you can see from the photos um blue gray um timber cladding has now been used on these dormers and then this is to the other side um as existing this is the size of the dormer that was approved so again you can see the distance from the bottom of the dormer to the eaves level and again the distance from the height of the dormer to the ridge level and you can also see the the width of the dormer and then this is now the proposed uh, or the as-built dormer. So this dormer is uh, 1.4 meters deeper than the, the previous approval. So that's taking it down to almost the eaves level of the property. And it's also 1.7 meters wider than the previous approval. So it's now a total 7.5 meters wide and a total of 3.7 meters deep. And again, you can see um, that the cladding has been used rather than the tile hanging. 
um, so the extension that comes out above um, the single story level at, at the rear, this roof extension here again, this is previously part of the previous approval and only very minor changes in terms of the size of the V-luxes um, is proposed within this area. So we don't have any real concerns with that. And then this is the was the existing rear elevation before the alterations. And this is now what's happened. So it's now became a get, become a gable end at the rear um, because of the, the roof extension that's occurred. And again, you can see this, the size of the dormer on the left hand side there. And then this is just showing the existing um, floor plan of the property. And then as built floor plans showing the extension um, out to the rear. This was the roof plan previously as existing. And this is now as built. So, um, so what's been um, what's been stated within the uh, statement that's been submitted by the applicant was regarding the um, staircase area. So you can see that area to the centre of the site here. So um, it, it would appear that in during construction, um, in order to achieve this staircase within the, within the roof conversion, it's resulted in the the dormer re increasing in depth. Um, in terms of impact on neighbours, there was previously not considered to be any impact on neighbours as all of these windows that you can see in both sides of the dormers are either secondary windows or the non-habitable room windows and therefore it was previously agreed that all of these windows would be obscure glaze so there's not considered to be any overlooking to neighbours from, from this um, first floor accommodation. So if I just flick back through um, to the photos so the, the biggest issue is to do with the, the dominant size of this dormer on the right hand side and also the use of materials um, It's considered that it unbalances the property and given the, the size of this dormer, it appears um, dominant within, within the roof gate of this, this modest building. And given the fact it's quite prominent, you can see it the long, um, long views along Boston Road, um, it's considered to be out of keeping with um, the proportions of the existing building architecturally unrelated to the existing building. In terms of materials, it's not considered to appear um, re well related to the, the materials that have been used on the existing building. You can see there's brick and um, painted render at ground floor level and then uh, red brown tiles at, um, at roof level. So the use of this blue grey cladding is considered to be completely out of keeping with the appearance of this building. So it's, it's therefore recommended for refusal on the grounds of the size of the dormer and the use of materials. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Emma. I move the officer's recommendation is adopted. Could I have a seconder, please? Could I have a seconder, please? Seconded. Seconded, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Rozeski. Um, members. You wish to debate? Yes, sir. Uh, Councillor Alban. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Question, please, for Officer. Um, uh, Emma, uh, it, uh, the letter that was read out on behalf of the applicants uh, made reference to uh, officers refusing it, uh, the, the dormer to be tile hung. I mean, is that it's total opposite to what you just said? So can you just confirm for us, please? Um, yes, that's fine. Um, so in order to try and rectify the situation um, with the fact that permission had not been given for, for a um, dormer of this size and obviously the, the materials have been used, um, from what I understand, the applicant has had put forward a proposal to toll hang the dormers, but it was considered by officers that on its own, that was not enough because it was the size of the dormer as well as the, as well as the use of materials that was a problem. So. We have no concerns at all with the use of tile hanging and obviously would support that. That's what we previously have approved. Um, but it was in addition, we would have required the, the dormer to be reduced in size. So it's a I mean, tile hanging, it would obviously reduce some impact, but it's the cumulative impact of the materials and the size of the dormer that we have concerns with. Thank you, Emma. Did you wish to come back, Councillor Robin? No, thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Joe Bayford. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this application has given me um, some some grief. Uh, I'm, on the face of it, guidance has been given and not adhered to. That can't be denied. But I do feel that the applicants have had misleading information as well. Um, I've walked up and down the road and I have to say, 
I don't think it looks out of place. There are so many different uh, versions of this up and down the road. Um, it is big, it can't be denied, but I don't think it stands out. I think the colouring looks okay. But I also understand that um, when a refusal is made, the applicant should adhere to that. And uh, I wouldn't want to set a precedent for for sort of breaking the, the rules that have been set. Um, but I have to say, I, I do think that it looks okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Bayford. Uh, Councillor Linda Wright. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I get, get what Jill is saying, but um, <clears throat> I do feel that um, it, the ret pe people know the rules about retrospective developments and I do think people do I'm not saying this applicant has done it but I think we have to we have to sort of, we have to honor the, the the views of the officer because people do use the retrospective route to, to force through an application that they know that nobody's going to going to do anything about and set therefore set a precedent I actually do think it's hideous if if um if I can be blunt, um, and I will be supporting the officer's re recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wright. Uh, Councillor Common Cook. Thank you, Chair. The the letter that um, Estelle read out said that the um, building inspector gave advice to them that was deemed to be wrong. Is that correct? Am I correct in saying that? Because it just seems to me, well, I've got to say, I agree with uh, Councillor Bayford. Uh, Councillor Wright, I disagree totally with you because of if they received from the building inspector uh, advice and it was wrong, then that's not their fault. So thank you, Chair. Uh, do you wish to come back on that, Emma, at all? Um, yes, if that's okay. Um, I think I think the issue is obviously there's the two processes: there's planning permission and there's um, building regulations. Now, from a, a building control inspector point of view, they would have gone out to inspect it during construction um, to check that um, that they were constructing it properly. And I think, from what I understand, the staircases caused the issue, and, and perhaps the, the drawings that maybe were originally drawn weren't. Um, large enough to achieve the size of staircase that was needed and so they would have been given advice by the building control inspector on the construction side of things now obviously what would then need to have occurred is for them to have come back to planning to for them to have um, had an amendment agreed um, to that proposal because they obviously had to build in accordance with the approved plans so um, I, I believe that's what's happened so I don't it's not an error that's occurred in terms of advice that's been given um, it would be that the building control inspector would have given advice under their legislation, but that differs to planning legislation. Uh, thank you for that, Emma. Um, Councillor Alban, you wish to come back? Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, just to, just on that point uh, that Councillor Carmel Cook raised, um, you know, that's a bit of a red herring, really. Um, they've chucked that in there. Uh, it's got nothing to do with the planning process. Um, However, the question, the question that I have, Chair, is that um, I understand the enforcement notice that's been served on the property. Can the um, officer please clarify exactly what the enforcement notice is for, uh, what, what the requirement of the notice is, and actually has it been served yet? Can you answer that, Emma? Yes, so I'll just get the enforcement notice up in front of me. So the requirements of the enforcement notice was to remove the unauthorised dormer window on the northeastern side of the property. So um, so currently it hasn't referred to the materials of the other two dormers, but that, that still could be subject to a further enforce, enforcement notice. But currently we've, we've asked for, for that to be, for the dormer to, itself to be removed. Um, we gave three months for that to happen. They have appealed the enforcement notice, but only on the grounds of extending the time period for those works to take place. And the inspector agreed that that could be amended to six months. They've been given six months in which to, to carry out those works and remove that dormer. Um, 
the only thing I'm not sure about is the actual um, time scale of when it was uh, dated September 2019. I'm just not sure with the appeal decision actually how that's affected the the final date. But I, from what I understand, the enforcement notice is served and they've been given six months for removal. Uh, thank you, Emma. Uh, Councillor Hart. Oh, sorry, Chair. Can I just come back on that point, Chair, please? Carry on. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, effectively, um, the, the owners of the property have accepted that the contents of the enforcement notice are fine and that it should be removed. And, uh, and, and, all, they've, and all they've appealed on is the time period that it should be removed. Uh, and un, under that... Under that situation, Chair, um, I support the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Alban. Um, Councillor Hart. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, I think my question has just been answered, really. Um, so they would be forced to take off the the bigger dormer and put it back to how it was on planning. Is that is that correct? Emma? Yeah. Yes, that's correct. So they have planning permission for the smaller dormer that you saw in the in the presentation. So the enforcement notice is requiring for the for the um, unlawful dormer to be removed, and then they can replace that with the dormer that has had planning permission. Thank you. So can so if if it gets refused, will it automatically mean that it goes back and everything goes back to how it was? So it all has to be tile hung and everything else. Um, you, the enforcement uh, notice, um, yeah, was for the removal of the dormer. We would then expect the new dormer that was put back should be in accordance with the approval. The approval was for the smaller dormer and that it was tile hung as well. Um, I believe because we've not actually included the materials of the other two dormers in the notice, I believe we would have to then serve another enforcement notice just to ask for them to change the materials of the other two dormers to the tile hanging. Thank you. Um, I have Councillor Garner. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to ask a question. Uh, during, the, during the presentation, you showed a number of other houses in the street with similar type dormers. Um, I'm just a little bit confused. I know maybe having a similar type dormer in, an, in another house up the road doesn't present a precedent that this house should have permission to have that dormer. But are, are the other dormers in the road um, similar or the, of the same type? So because it just say, it seems a little bit unfair to me that they they're looking up the road at their neighbours' houses with dormers that are similar to the ones they've built, but yet they're being asked to, to take theirs down when the ones up the road were given permission to be give, to be built. Emma, can you? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that is, it's a very long road. We've had a lot of applications in for different roof extensions along this road. So there is a, a huge variety in the, the different um, types of um, dormer that have been erected on the roofs. We, we're not, we can't find any exact comparison between this proposal um, and, and in anything that exists in the road. Yeah, there are, like I say, different sized dormers, but in most cases they are tile hung, so that reduces the impact. Um, or if they have been um, clad, it's because the whole building has been um, redesigned so that it all ties in. So in terms of an overall design, it, 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 it sits quite well because it's in, in keeping with the rest of the building. Um, I mean, I can't say to you that I, any this, how this compares in terms of size to other properties in the road because, you know, there are some slightly larger dormers in the road, some smaller dormers, but I, I don't have any evidence to show what exact size they were of other dormers in the road but in terms of this application it's the cumulative impact of having such a large dormer with a material that's out of keeping with the rest of the property and how that the cumulative impact of that how that sits in terms of the overall appearance of it and um and views of it within the street thank you emma um council scott uh thank you chair um yeah i, I think it may have been covered but i mean i think as the, the officer highlighted, one of the main issues was obviously the size, but also the keeping in character. So, I mean, to my understanding, the uh, applicant said that they could basically retile. They they could 
redo that to keep into the character? Would that effectively put some movement on that? Emma? Um, well, from the from what I understand from the letter that was read out, um, they said that they originally um, said that they were happy to to change the cladding to tile hanging, which, as I said, we would have accepted, but in addition, we would have wanted the dormer to be reduced in size. They're now saying they're not willing to offer tile hanging as a solution. They would just be looking at um, painting the tile, the, painting the cladding to tie in with the roof colour, which I, I don't personally see as a, as a good solution because the painting of cladding, it's you know how that's going to look in terms of you know, 10 years time, how that's going to appear and also getting a colour that actually ties in with the roof. So I don't think we'd be um, keen to support that proposal of um, the colouring of the cladding, although I appreciate that that would be an improvement compared to the blue grey cladding that we have, because it would be a bit more in keeping with the roof colour. But I don't think that alone is enough for us to um, overcome our concerns at the moment. Thank you. Um... I cannot see any other members wishing to speak, so uh, I'm going to put this motion to yourselves, which is uh, the office recommendation is to refuse. Um, once again, I'm going to call your names out, and if you could, um, for, against, or abstain, I would be grateful. So, uh, Councillor Coleman Cook. Against. Councillor Orban. For the officer's recommendation. Yes, thank you for that, Councillor Alban. Uh, I didn't make myself quite clear there. Um, I think other members would have heard you there. Uh, Councillor Bayford. Against. Councillor Ruth Duckworth. For. Councillor Mike Garner. Against. Councillor David Hart. For. Councillor Pat Moore. Have we lost Pat? Um, we're back. Are you back? Yes. Uh, against. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Rzeski. For. Councillor Harry Scobie. For. Councillor Matthew Scott. Abstain. Councillor Linda Wright. For. And myself, I'm for. Emily, I think that, I believe, would have been carried. Thank you, members. That motion has been carried. Thank you. Right, sir, so that, the applications that have not been reserved uh, and determined by or in accordance with the officer's recommendation. Could I have a seconder, please? Um, I need to call. Yeah, the I'll second that. Um, sorry, sorry Emily. Can you speak on them? It's it's yes. Is there is there any members wishing to speak on the applications at all? I do, chair. If you could read 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 them out, please. Um, right. I can read them out. That's fine. Um, for thank you, Emily. 4A, 65 Downs Road, Ramsgate. Yes, I'd like to speak on that, please, Chair. Okay. 4A. Thank you for that, Emily. I'm going through your notes and not the agenda, pro proper agenda. Uh, so we, if we could move on to um, Downs Road. Who is... Do we have anybody else speaking? I don't think we do. Mr Livingston. Thank you, Chair. I'll just share my screen uh, with members. Oh. Um, can you see the presentation, members? That's a nice picture of mountains there at the moment. Oh, okay. So, apologies. It's it's defaulted to my other screen. Bear with me, please. Sorry about yeah. this. That's just round the corner from Downs Road. I thought it was. <laughs> right. Um, hopefully, you might be able to. Uh, let me just present the the screen. There we go. Okay. There we go. 
Hopefully, excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, so the application site is outlined in red. So this is, um, you can see here, Downs Road and Chiltern Lane. So we're in the Chiltern part on the western end of Ramsgate. Um, so this is a detailed block plan of the, uh, which shows actually the proposal on it. So the proposal is for um, a series of roof extensions on the property, um, which includes front and rear dormer windows, as well as a side and rear extension uh, that is proposed that you can see on this block plan. So the in question is uh, next to this red arrow on this slide here. And it is a bungalow that you can just see the pitch of in the centre of the image. Um, so this is what the uh, property looks like at the moment. So on the left hand side, you have a pair of bungalows um, as well as a bungalow on the right hand side. So you can see the pair of bungalows that uh, are next to the property. So that's number 67 next door. Uh, and then you can see on the left hand side of the image, you can see the other uh, pair of bungalows that's the other side of um, number 65. And then you can see Downs Road um, it to the right hand side of the image. So you can see there is uh, predominantly the, the road turns into uh, two story properties, uh, but the immediate vicinity of the site is one of bungalows. So, yeah, here's an image just showing the opposite side of the road. Um, showing the, the range of designs of properties that are present on Downs Road. So here, this is, again, showing the block plan. I'm just going to show some images of the, the rear of the property. So this is looking down at the bit uh, at the back of, of um, Downs Road. So on the right-hand side of this image, uh, you have um, what is uh, number 67. Um, and then you've got, so this is another image just showing the existing relationship between the two properties. And then this is just the rear extension. So if I go back, so this is the existing rear extension that's going to be built out onto the back of. So to the left, you have number 63 and to the right, you have number 67. Um, and then this is a view from the front looking down between number 63 uh, with number 65 on the left hand side so you can see at the moment that there's a quite a separation distance between number 65 and number 63 in terms of um, habitable rooms in number 63 with the garage that's currently present um, which is on the boundary between those two properties and then just looking down to see that relationship so the the side extension which is going to be coming out from the uh, yellow bricked extension on the left hand side would fill in the gap where where the bins are that you can see at the moment so adjacent to that garage um, and then wrapping around that existing rear extension so in terms of the changes to the front of the property uh, the proposal would increase the ridge height of the property to be able to get the um, roof accommodation in and that's what what triggers the need for planning permission for the for the roof extension with uh, two dormer windows that are proposed within that front uh, front elevation. Um, then moving back round, oh, you can actually also, sorry, you can also see the side extension on the right hand side of the image here, uh, adjacent to the, the garage, which has been shown in outline form. Uh, that side extension is set back and we'll look at the block plan at the end as well. So you can see that relationship with the front elevation. Um, with the front of the property also being rendered as well. And you can see there's a change in the design of the of the sort of ground floor facade of the building as well. And then here is the existing rear extension uh, and rear elevation, which we've looked at the photos of. And that would change with a rear dormer window going into the roof slope. And then with the extension, which, as mentioned, builds out to the side, but also comes further back as well at the rear. Uh, so this is the side um, elevation of buildings. So this is what faces number 63, where the, the garage was that we saw in the, in the photo. So you can see this extends out the back again, 
um and also then you've got the actual side extension part as well so you see from this image that the side extension part of the of the proposal is set quite far back into the site um so way back from the front elevation of of the property and then this is the other side so this is next to number 67 um and you can see again so on this side it's extending the the rear extension out um and to the back um and then this is the ground floor plan so again showing the extent of of the extension that's wrapping around uh that existing single story rear extension uh on the right hand image then you've got the existing roof plan obviously which doesn't have any accommodation in it um with then the proposal to put um a dorm windows front and back uh, to serve a new bedroom at first floor um, and then this is a section of the existing roof and then a new section just showing um what is proposed so i'll just go back to the block plan to summarize the issues so the main issues for members to consider are the impact on the living conditions of neighboring properties as well as the impact on the character and appearance of the area um, so in, in officer's view, the impact on the character and appearance of the area, there are no concerns with the rear extension due to its location and the fact that the side extension is, is set quite far back into the site and away from the road. In terms of the, the dormer windows and the increase in ridge height, uh, there is obviously, as, as the images show, a variety of designs of properties in the area. Um, and whilst this is a bungalow that's set between two sets of bungalows, I'm oh, sorry, one, I, I misspoke earlier, one bungalow, number 63, and, and two, two bungalows, uh, number 67 and 69. Um, that doesn't form the character of the area with the rest of Downs Road being quite varied and obviously predominantly two-storey, very in very close proximity to this site. So we don't consider that the, uh, the dorm windows that are proposed are, are overly obtrusive or out of character with the area. Um, in terms of impact on neighbouring properties, you can see the relationship that's proposed shown in this block plan. And obviously we've seen the images showing the relationship with those properties um, next door. So it's not protruding past the rear extent of number 67, obviously to the left of this block plan uh, adjacent to number 65. And then in terms of the impact on number 63, um, it's obviously adjacent to a garage, but it's not in close proximity to any habitable room windows which would cause concern potentially in terms of issues to do with sense of enclosure uh, and that sort of thing. So overall, it is considered that it is uh, the, the application is in accordance with, um, I can say this for the first time, new local plan policy uh, QDO2, um, which is the character and appearance policy. Um, and therefore, the, uh, the recommendation is for approval. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Ian. Um, apologies, Councillor Alban. I turned over a page rather quick there, so it's always good to hear your voice um, coming in, so my apologies. Uh, I move the officer's recommendation, which uh, to be adopted, um, which is to approve. Could I have a seconder, please? I'll second, second that, too. Uh, thank you, Councillor Common Cook. Um, do you wish to debate, to debate this, members? If I could come in, Chair. Certainly. Yeah, Chair, I, I, I called this application in because uh, when I first saw it and saw the amount of uh, work that needed to be done to completely change this uh, relatively small bungalow in, in conjunction with the others surrounding it, um, it seemed quite a heavy amount of... Uh, it, it's, it seemed over development of the site um can i can i just ask uh mr livingston if he could advise me how high the roof has increased yeah, yeah. thank you chair um it's it's gone up by seven 700 mil um so 0 0.7 of a meter um obviously that does mean that there's been uh, an increase in the roof pitch um, obviously, to to accommodate that, but it is still a, it is you know it's still a still a pitch roof that's being being proposed within the design. Okay. Thank you, chair. Thank you. Can I come back, chair? Certainly. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've I've got no problem at all with the rear with the rear extension, as uh, Mr. Livingston said. 
it's it's set quite back on on the side and at the and at the rear it goes in line with the adjacent bungalows. Um, I, I I am having slight dif difficulty with the uh, the changing in the roof. Um, however, I'd just like to uh, uh, think on on that chair and see if any other members want to say anything on this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Alban. I can't see any other members wish to speak. No, nobody's uh, come up on my screen here. Um, beg your pardon, there has uh, Councillor Roseski. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, looking at uh, the drawings there and everything, it all looks quite uh, uh, suitable for the area. I will be supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Roseski. Um, any other speakers before this goes to vote? Did you want to uh, come back at all, Councillor Alban? Okay, thank you, thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, I think on on balance, um, uh, I will go along with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, the recommendation is for approval. So once again, members. Um, I will call out your names, and if you can, for if you're for it, obviously against, if you're against, and uh, or abstain. So, Norman Cook, for Councillor Alban, for Councillor Bayford, for Councillor Duckworth, for Councillor Garner. Councillor Hart. Four. Councillor Moore. Four. Councillor Rzeski. Four. Councillor Harry Scobie. Four. Councillor Scott. Four. Four. Councillor Wright. Four. And myself, I'm four as well. Uh, so that looks so that has been, motion has been carried. I always get clarification ahead. Thank you, Emily. Um, there are other, uh, other items on the agenda. Um, I do apologise just now. We seem to do it at this stage. Uh, um, but if Emily wishes to read those agenda items out, I know you've done it once, Emily, but just to make sure we've got it correct, if there any member wishes to speak on any of the other items. Um, there's um, no further public speaking. Um, that, that was on public public speaking items covered, so we'll move on to the next agenda item. Okay, so agenda item five, uh, it's the application for a proposed certificate of lawful development, number 24, Old Crossing Road, Margate. I'd ask the officer to read this out, I believe it's Ian. Uh, yes, I'll just um, present my screen. Um, so just to confirm, um, for the record, Emma Fibbins has left the meeting uh, at this point. Um, so the this is uh, an application for a certificate of lawful development. Um, the reason this is being referred to um, planning committee is because uh, the applicant in this instance and in the subsequent agenda item um, are um, employees of the council, related to employees of the council, and under the constitution, any application under planning legislation submitted by uh, direct relations or, or officers of the council need to be referred to members. Um, so this is a, your normal planning action because as the report outlined, considerations in this instance are not on a, a material planning consideration basis, not looking at impact on character and appearance of the area or impact on neighbours. Um, it's, it's going through the criteria that's provided in the general permitted development order to see whether or not the development actually accords with the specifications within that order, which um, outline what can be done without needing planning permission. So I'll show you a couple of the plans uh, and just touch on uh, the relevant permitted development rights uh, on this particular uh, certificate that's been submitted to us. So number 24 is in the center of the image. So what's being proposed in this instance is a change from a hipped roof to a gallend uh, roof with uh, a rear window 
that's being proposed. So um, this assessment for permitted development rights um, occurs under, under it's Schedule 2 Part 1 Class B, which looks at durations specifically. Um, in fact, we've obviously just had a couple of applications related to roof alterations. Um, so the difference between those applications and this application, um, you can extend uh, your roof in terms of the accommodation that you can get up there as long as you fit specific criteria. One of the key criteria is that the ridge height of the existing property cannot increase at all, um, but also there is a specific new content that cannot be exceeded when extended roof. So in this instance, what us has done is look at plans that have been submitted um, and the roof extension that are being proposed in this instance not over 40 cubic metres, which is the upper limit, um, and therefore, uh, in according with the other conditions as well, condition that's being proposed for terms of the dormer window and the hip to gable part of the roof extension accord with the, criteria, the relevant criteria. Also, one of the other conditions of that specification is that materials have to match the existing property. So in this instance, the dormer window at the rear is to be tile hung. Um, in terms of the side elevation of the, of the proposed uh, extension, um, what's being proposed here is a side window. So under the general development order, sides are permitted, um, but only when they are obscure glazed and also non-opening uh, above 1.7 metres from the finished floor level of the property. So in this instance, the window has been shown to be obscure glazed with only an opening above 1.7 above that finished floor level of the upper floors. So um, in officer's view, it complies with the requirements of the general permitted development order uh, and therefore it's recommended to members that the certificate is granted. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Ian. I move uh, the officer's recommendation is adopted. Um, could I have a seconder, please? Oh, second. Second. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Common Cook. Uh, do you wish to debate this handle? I can't see anybody coming up on my screen here. So, uh, right. So, once again, uh, if you you know how this works now, for against or abstain, please. I'm calling your name out, um, Councillor Common Cook. Four. Councillor Bayford. <clears throat> Councillor Ruth Duckworth, Councillor Garner, four, Councillor Hart, four, Chair, Councillor Pat Moore, four, Councillor George Rzeski, four, Councillor Harry Scobie, four, Councillor Matthew Scott, four, Councillor Lynn White. Four. And myself, four. Uh, that's Can I have a vote, Chair? But did I leave you out? <laughs> you got to against me today, Chair, aren't you? I know. I know. I always have a go at you, Steve. Yep. Councillor Alban. Uh, four. <laughs> I, I know why, but I won't, you know, my fault. My fault. Um, but that has been carried. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Moving on now to agenda item six, an application for proposed certificate of lawful development at three Upton Grange. Is that yourself, Ian? It, it is, Chair. Uh, I will Thank share you. my screen again. Um, so this, um, members are getting a nice tour of the permitted development rights today. Uh, so this is uh, another certificate of law development, again, not considering the merits of the case, but whether or not the criteria has been met. Um, so this is a uh, the property in question. What's being um, put forward here is a series of extensions, um, so not roof extensions, so not under Class B of uh, Schedule 2 Part 1 of the General Permitted Development Order, but under Class A. So this is looking at um, a series of extensions to the side um, and rear that are proposed. Um, so um, this is the property in question. You can see this is an existing plan. Um, what's being proposed, and I'll just skip to the, the side and 
elevation because that will show it a bit better. Um, so what's being proposed in this instance is a single story side extension within an extension area as well. And, and it does include in this instance, a an extension to a two story ex, uh, pro bit of the property at the back. So it actually includes a two story extension on it. Um, so under the permitted development order, um, two story extensions are allowed when um, there is a specific distance uh, over and above which you can extend uh, two stories from the rear boundary of the site or to any boundary of the site. So the general permitted development order was changed in 2015 to allow for you know additional extensions when they're not in close proximity with neighbouring properties. Um, this instance, again, the assessment has been made. Um, the materials have been confirmed to be to match uh, the existing property. Um, previously, um, PD rights under this class were done on the basis of, uh, again, on, on cubic content, but that's no longer the case. So it's all about the relationship with the boundaries and how far you are away from boundaries, as well as whether or not, in the case of side extensions, you're actually extending over and above half the width of the property. Um, so in this instance, all the criteria have been met uh, by the application uh, and therefore it's recommended to members that the certificate is granted. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Ian. Uh, I move that the officer's recommendation is adopted. I want to say, could I have a seconder, please? Second. I'll second that, Chair. Thank you. Is there anybody who wishes to speak? No. Okay, so I'm going to put this to the vote once again. Uh, Councillor Common Cook? Four. Councillor Auburn? Four. <laughs> Didn't wish at that time. Councillor Bayford? Four. Councillor Duckworth? Four. Councillor Garner? Four. Councillor Hart? Four. Councillor Patmore? Four. Councillor Ozeski? Four. Councillor Scobie? Four. Councillor Scott? Councillor Wright? Four. And myself, uh, four. Okay, and that looks so it's been carried. Thank you very much. That motion has been carried. Okay, moving on to agenda item seven. Application again for a non-material amendment to planning permission at number nine Edmondson Avenue, Margate. Is this yourself, uh, Ian? You're doing well. It is, yes, Chair. Thank you. I know you want to get. Um, so, so this is a, a, a slightly different from the previous ones. So this is um, again um, it's coming before members as a as a council employee. Um, this is. Um, actually for a non-material amendment to a previous approval. Um, in this instance, um, in officer's view, it's, it's, it's very straightforward in so much as um, the application was for a series of extensions at the rear of the property, um, as well as some alterations. I will just skip through these photos which show. So um, there are no changes proposed under the non-material amendment procedure uh, to the front of the property. Um, in terms of what's actually changing from the permission, what's what's changing in this instance is it, the rear extension is actually getting smaller. So if I go to the image of the floor plans, you can see what's what's happened in this instance is it was approved with a 6.8 meter extension at the rear, but it's actually only extending by 5.8 uh, meters in this instance. Uh, in terms of the other change that's occurring is the roof light that was previously serving the staircase um, is actually effectively um, it's 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 changing in terms of where it is because um, it's so it's actually moving up the, the roof slope slightly. So um, this particular procedure is to consider whether or not the changes that are being proposed are material or not, and whether or not they do have a, an impact on the permission as granted. As there is a reduction in size in this instance, it's not considered that there is any any material change to the planning permission as granted, uh, and therefore it's recommended uh, to approve this this non-material amendment. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Ian. I move that the officer's recommendation is adopted. Could I have a seconder, please? Seconded. 
Councillor Roseski, I believe that was. Uh, okay, members, do you wish to debate this at all? Silence. Okay, I'm going to put this to the vote with yourselves. I think you know how this works now. So if I call your name out, uh, Councillor Coleman Cook. Four. Councillor Alban. Four. Councillor Bayford. Four. Councillor Duckworth. Four. Councillor Garner. Four. Councillor Hart. Four. Councillor Patmore. Four. Councillor Rozeski. Four. Councillor Scobie. Four. Councillor Scott. Four. Four. Councillor Wright and myself, four. Thank you, members, uh, officers. Uh, that concludes this afternoon's planning meeting. Thank you very much. Um, I believe we are due to meet in two weeks' time as a normal meeting. Um, so thank you for your attendance this afternoon. I will get my